In this video, I'm going to derive e of x for the geometric distribution. Now, if you haven't seen sequences and series for A-level maths, then you're going to get a little bit lost uh, in this derivation. So I would strongly recommend that you take a look at geometric sequences and series and summing to infinity from A-level maths before you make any headway with this video. Okay? Uh, otherwise, you might get a little bit lost. So we've got x is a geometric distribution with probability p. Now, in the previous video, I explained that quite often you'll see q as 1 minus p. And that's how it's written in the formula booklet. And I'm going to use that notation in this video just to make things a little bit easier. So if I was to write out the probability distribution in the table, it would look like this. You'd have r and probability of x being equal to r. And the values of r can take 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Now, the probability of x being equal to 1 is just p. The probability of x being equal to 2 is 1 minus p times p, so q times p. The probability of x being equal to 3 is q squared times p. And the probability of x being equal to 4 is q cubed times p. And so on. So if I was to find e of x, this would be the sum from r equals 1 to infinity, because unlike the binomial distribution, there is no uh, cap on what n can be. So that just keeps on going. And you get your values of r and multiply them by their respective probabilities. OK, so e of x, using our table, would be 1 times p plus 2 times qp plus 3 times q squared p plus 4 times q cubed p, etc. And that would be an infinite sum. Now, there is a little bit of a problem with what we've got uh, that is stopping us from making any headway. And the problem is actually the coefficients. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. So, how can I get rid of those? So the way to do that is not immediately obvious. And it won't make a whole lot of sense as to what this next step is until you see what we do with it. I'm going to multiply everything by q. Now, as I said, that wouldn't be immediately obvious, but I'm going to multiply everything by q. So I'm going to multiply the left-hand side by q, so I get q lots of ex. I'm going to have q lots of p. Now, I'm going to write that underneath here, so that I've got the qps lining up. OK? So I've multiplied that one by q, and I get this term. I'm going to multiply that term by q, and I get 2q squared p. So I'm making sure the q squared p's line up. Then I'm going to multiply this term by q, and I'm going to have 3q cubed p, and then an infinite number of other terms. Now notice how the coefficient of each term here on this line, so 1, 2, 3, is always 1 less than the coefficient in my first line, 2, 3, 4. So if I was to subtract this row from that one, that would get rid of all of my problems with the coefficients, because I would end up with 1, 1, 1, etc. So I'm going to do that line, take away that line. So on the left-hand side, I get e of x, take away q, lots of e of x. I've got p, take away nothing. 2qp, take away qp, is just qp. 3q squared p take away 2q squared p, it's just q squared p. 4q cubed p take away 3q cubed p, is going to be q cubed p, etc. Now, the left-hand side I can factorise. They two terms with e of x, so I can write that as 1 take away q times e of x. 
The right hand side I can factorise also because all of those terms have a factor of p. So I can factor out the p and have 1 plus q plus q squared plus q cubed plus etc. An infinite series. Now, focus your attention on this. 1 plus q plus q squared plus q cubed etc. Now, q being 1 minus p will always be a value between 0 and 1. So, what we've got is an infinite geometric series, because I'm multiplying by q each time. I'm starting at 1, so a is 1. And because I'm multiplying by q each time, my common ratio is q. So, a is 1, r is q. And I have a summing to infinity formula, a over 1 minus r. Now, I can use this formula because, as I said, q is going to be a value between 0 and 1. So that fits the bill. Because remember, the modulus of r has got to be less than 1 in order for us to have a sum to infinity. So that whole bit there, that infinite series... I can write as 1 over 1 minus q. So what I can do is then write that as p over 1 minus q. Divide both sides by 1 minus q. So I've now got p over 1 minus q squared. Now, if q is equal to 1 minus p, then 1 minus q has got to be equal to p, just by rearranging that equation. So if 1 minus q is p, I've actually got p over p squared. And dividing top and bottom by p, I get 1 over p. And that is e of x for a geometric series, or a geometric distribution rather.